All right, crazy slots, let's do it. Give me something good. Oh, yeah. uh, damn. Bad roll. Very, very bad roll. Because this slot turns the Hatsu into an unfortunately large and cumbersome YouTube subscribe button that will not revert until everybody watching this video has pressed it. So please, for the love of crazy slots, free me from this burden, and at the same time, sign yourself up for some regular Hunt Hunter content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. Doesn't seem like the worst deal in the world, right? Hello and welcome to the New World Review, your source for everything anime and manga, and today it's time to talk about both, specifically in regards to Hunter x Hunter, and quite possibly the most controversial change between the original manga and the 2011 anime, being Kite's introduction into the series, as well as the quite radical overall effect that it would go on to have for the anime medium. And if you're an anime only watcher of Hunter x Hunter, or perhaps even a manga only reader, I'm sure there are at least a few of you that exist, then you may not necessarily know what I'm talking about, in which case I am about to somewhat blow your mind. And for for the sake of source material, I'm going to start with these events as they occurred in the manga. So for anime only watchers, fun fact here, Kite is actually technically the very first character we ever see in the series, which is an honor bestowed to him by placing him on the chapter one color spread alongside Gon. Although since we read manga right to left, Kite is technically our first character. But wait, why does he appear so early on given that he doesn't get involved properly until the events of the Chimera Antark? Well, he appears because Kite is actually everything. The story then goes on to open as per the anime, with Gong catching the master of the swamp and expressing his desire to take the hunter exam as per his deal with Mito. Shortly after this, Gon encounters the fox bear Kon, who is removed from this portion in the 2011 anime, and we enter a flashback of when Gon first met Kon, an event in which anime watchers will remember sort of took place during episode 76, a fair, fair way into the series. And furthermore, in the anime, this happens as a short montage rather than actually playing out the scene, which we'll get into, but not giving it room to breathe is a big problem as you will see. But as the events play out in which Kite strikes down down Kon's mother in order to save Gon, and then he eventually discovers that Gon is the son of Jing. Kite then tells Gon all about Jing, the two of them bond, and Kite leaves, with Jing's hunter's license left mysteriously on the floor for Gon to pick up, effectively issuing our plucky young protagonist a challenge to become a hunter himself and find Jing. Afterwards, we cut back to the modern day, Gon says goodbye to Kon, then Mito, and we're on a boat, all in a single beautiful chapter that lays out everything right in front of us. Now, as for how the 2011 anime handled this, the Kite flashback was removed and entirely from episode one. So Gon basically captures the master of the swamp, says goodbye to Mito, and then it is boat time, where the entirety of the events of chapter two then go on to play out for the rest of episode one. Now, if you don't think that this change is at all meaningful, then you are about to be very, very surprised. But firstly, if I had to offer an explanation as to why this change was made, I'd say that it was to launch anime viewers into the action with great haste, because remember, at this point, we already had not only a manga story, but also a 1999 anime adaptation. And so the 2011 edition really needed to do something to hook people early on, which as it would turn out would be to blast through these initial chapters. However, as much as I can see the short-term benefit of this decision, I now believe that it was most certainly the wrong choice to make because it would negatively affect pretty much the entire Chimera Antark, which is kind of the bulk of the series in retrospect, as well as give the overall story a bit more of a flimsy commencement, shall we say. And we'll discuss the latter first for the sake of chronology, which is that the removal of the kite flashback is effectively removing the call to adventure for Gon, which is, you know, the thing that the entire series is based on, meeting kite and receiving Jing's hunter's license is the catalyst for this whole adventure. And in the 2011 anime, there is no groundwork laid in this regard. We are instead met with a young boy going on a journey to become something we know nothing about, to find a character we know nothing about in a world that we know nothing about. Now, the last part isn't so important because you explore the world as you go, but missing all three of these aspects is indeed a problem. And I think that this is best epitomized in my wife's review of episode one, actually, in which she spends a great deal of time just being confused by the situation presented to her. She had no idea what a hunter was or why Gon wanted to be one. And that is so, so important to allow us to get fully on board with this character. And the kite flashback answers both of these questions very satisfactorily because we see what a hunter is in the form of kite. This kind of powerful and environmentally aware being that is something to look up to and aspire towards. And not only that, but the fact that this incredibly mature and admirable being actively looks up to Gon's father, plants the seed into Gon's imagination regarding exactly what kind of phenomenal being Jing is. And all of a sudden you can very easily understand why Gon would actually want to find his father in the first place. Because we as an audience want to find Jing. 
because he's being conveyed as nothing less than an incredible presence. But none of that is present in the 2011 adaptation. I personally did not care whatsoever about Jing when I watched it. He was just another guy in this world that I knew nothing about. As such, Gon's motivation seems quite empty in comparison to the manga events. And yes, you can make the argument that the 2011 anime does cover this eventually and adds context to it, but it's far, far too late by then because anyone who was not hooked as a result of Gon's vaguely presented motivation has probably stopped watching the series about 70 episodes prior to this flashback actually being presented. So I get the way the anime did this gave us some kind of boost in temporary pacing, but it reduced the overall hook of Hunter Hunter because Kite is meant to be our shiny example of what a hunter is and provide the driving force to delve into this journey to find Jing. But in the anime, as far as I'm concerned, a boy caught a fish and then decided to leave his island for no adequately explored reason. And it's not just Gon that loses something very important in motivation because this actually has a much more profound effect on the character of Kite, who as a result of the manga events was a key figure. And for some comparison, I would equate Kite in the manga to having the kind of role that Shanks would have in One Piece. Despite not appearing much throughout the series, Shanks was in chapter one and he was that role model that was responsible for igniting Luffy's dreams. But now imagine a One Piece where we are never given this context and Luffy's Pirate King ambition is devoid of all meaning because who even cares about becoming the Pirate King? It has no emotional resonance anymore. However, if we continue with the comparison, then like halfway through the Grand Line, Luffy suddenly remembers Shanks and why he wanted to become the Pirate King in the first place. It would just completely devalue Shanks just as it does Kite. Because in the great wisdom of the otherwise fairly brilliant 2011 series, when Gon encounters Kite for the first time, he doesn't even recognize the face of the man who has had the most profound effect on his entire life. And when the flashback does play out, it happens in a montage format, which further devalues the fact that this very moment was the inception of Hunter Hunter as we know it. And as someone who first went through the series with the 2011 anime, I will admit that the beginning of Hunter Hunter did not bother me so much. I had no idea what to expect and I just accepted Gon's whimsical desires. However, when we came to this point, this was a big problem for me. The fact that we had gotten 76 episodes in and all of a sudden there was this character of paramount importance being wedged into the story and it just felt incredibly wrong. And it made ever so much sense when I did decide to read the manga afterwards. But for this initial impression, Kite felt like some sort of poorly implemented retcon. Then when you look at this event in the manga, it just plays out to perfection. Kite and Gon meet in the opening act of the Chimera Antarc and they both recognize each other immediately as if the bond that they formed in chapter one of the series had never dulled. It was a fantastic reunion and you feel that as a reader because he was a character who effectively began the story and he had now come back into it. So there's a lot of hype surrounding it as well because you're like, oh my God, finally we get to explore Kite. And that really does lead to by far the biggest impact that this decision had because you know, Gon not having as solid a motivation as he could is one thing, a clumsy retcon flashback impacting a character is another. But the one thing that truly serves as a detriment to the story is the fact that removing this flashback destroyed the relationship between Gon and Kite, which is the key to the Chimera Antark, as well as Gon's climax in the entirety of Hunter Hunter. When I was watching the 2011 anime, I had some legitimate trouble understanding why Gon cared so much about Kite, because there was just no reason to. By this point in the series, Gon has been established as a kid who doesn't really form major attachments to his mentor figures. I mean, just imagine if Wing or Bisky had been killed. Yes, it would have had an emotional effect on him, but I don't see Gon falling into the same spiral of despair, sorrow, and anger that would lead him to make such a suicidal Nenval for the simple act of revenge, even if he did feel responsible for their deaths. And the entire reason why Gon went down this path when Kite was involved, because as it turns out, Kite was far more than just a simple mentor figure. If anything, Kite serves as far more of an actual father figure than Jing could ever dream of being. Gon may have only known Kite for that one day, but during that day, Kite taught Gon an incredibly important life lesson, as well as ignited Gon's passion for the future. And when they did finally reunite during the Chimera Antarc, Kite continued his fatherly nature, albeit in a brutal hunter sort of way. But with that context in mind, Gon's transformation makes so, so much more sense because in many ways he feels responsible for killing the closest person that he had ever had to a father. And that familial bond is going to do some very powerful things as we went on to see. And the 2011 anime is missing this. And while I obviously couldn't identify exactly what it was missing at the time, I do vividly recall not quite believing and understanding why Gon was seemingly very suddenly pushed into this place of pure darkness. It just wasn't the sort of thing that would come from meeting a nice guy who was so unimportant to you that you completely forgot about him as a child. And this is troublesome to me because this is not just an arc specific character journey. This is Gon effectively done for the entire series. His feelings
feelings for Kite culminated in him taking himself out of action and irrevocably changing Hunter Hunter going forward. And not only that, but Gon was only actually properly healed, not by Alaka, but by encountering and apologizing to the reincarnated Chimera and Kite, which in the anime did very little for me, to be honest. But at that point, I was beyond trying to understand and empathize with why Gon cares so much about a relationship that according to what I'd seen, had never really existed. So you would think that properly building that relationship would be absolutely the most important thing you could possibly do with this anime series, but I guess not. So if it came down to a choice of adding one extra episode into the Hunter exam arc, or maybe even half an episode, then I would easily take that over undercutting the protagonist's emotional climax of the entire series. Especially considering the Hunter exam arc is bogged down by a couple of episodes of recap anyway. And yeah, I know different considerations at play here. Recaps are often put in place, usually for budgetary reasons, but the fact that they are there removes the argument of pacing entirely. So look, I love the 2011 anime. It was my first Hunter Hunter experience and I will praise it to the end of my days for being a really super solid product. But even when I was watching it, without knowing what I do now, Kite just felt off to me. I didn't like how suddenly important he was. I mean, he was a cool character, but we have plenty of those. So why did you need to shoehorn your way into the main protagonist's childhood like you were some kind of fanfic writer's OC? So I really do wish that the anime had preserved that relationship because that dynamic, as I keep saying, is literally everything that is Hunter Hunter. It is the reason why the series begins and it is the reason why Gon's story ends. There is no other change in the anime that I think actively hurts the series. There are other things that I do question, but this is the only one that I find completely unacceptable. I still enjoyed the 2011 anime, but looking back on it, it just could have hit me so much harder if it had just stuck to the original telling of the events. So it's a really unfortunate flaw from an otherwise fantastic anime endeavor. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're keen for some more Hunt Hunter content, then please do check out my other videos or even subscribe to the channel for regular Hunt Hunter glory delivered straight to your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the New World Review and I'll see you next time.